Describe this place for me. Where are you? I'm in the um, I'm in the woods with my grandmother. Mm -hmm. I'm a child, mm -hmm. and we we are listening for birds. Listening for actually chickadees. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so tell me what's happening there. We're walking. Mm -hmm. We're walking through the woods. I'm behind her. And she's leading. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm a child, actually. Mm -hmm. I'm in a little... I have these little red shoes on. And I'm in like a onesie mm -hmm. that's red with white polka dots. Mm -hmm. How old are you? I am probably... Five, mm -hmm. three, five, mm -hmm. something like that. Four, maybe. I'm just little. Mm -hmm. So let's find out what Grandmother has to say to you today. I'd like for you to find a nice place to sit down with Grandmother. And let's say what, see what words of wisdom Grandmother has for you today. She is... She's just there because... She loved nature, too. Mm -hmm. She loved the birds. And she would talk to us about nature. She, this is out on her old, the old farm mm -hmm. that she grew up on. And it's not really, you know, a, a big farm or anything. Um, but the old house is there and the barn mm -hmm. and it would just it was just peaceful there mm -hmm. very good is there anything else important about this scene no it just it just makes me happy it just makes mm -hmm. me remember when i was a a child mm -hmm. uh before the the cares of the world mm -hmm. and you know she passed away and others begun to pass away and things like that very good so let's close that scene now and let's go through time and space through another memory another memory that has impacted the life of joan i'm going to count from five back to one when we get to number one you'll be in that memory, five, going back in time now, four, three, two, and one. Be there now. Where are you? I don't know where I am. Mm -hmm. Describe this place for me. What does it feel like? I don't see anything yet. Mm -hmm. So I'd like for you now to change from seeing to knowing. A desert is what I want to say. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. How does it feel to you? Use your knowing. It feels, uh, it feels vast. Mm -hmm. I see, I, I see something now. Mm -hmm. I see like a, a Joshua tree mm -hmm. or, you know, not a cactus, but some kind of pine tree. Mm -hmm. And I see off into the horizon. And I think it's like, almost sunset or something mm -hmm. is the sky is um there's a darkness mm -hmm. to it like night is coming and as the observer of this scene do you feel that you have a body there check in and see i don't know mm -hmm. so use all of your senses and let's find out about the observer 
Let's see. I want to say, I want to say I'm a man. Mm -hmm. I want to say I'm an Indian mm -hmm. and I have long hair. Mm -hmm. And what I'm seeing is like a, a, a skins mm -hmm. on my legs, like a, and a breech cloth, mm -hmm. something that's decorated across my front. How old do you feel there? Um, twenties or thirties. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not overly muscular. I am life. I'm, I am, I am, uh, not thin. I just medium, mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, are you walking or are you? On an animal? Where do you, what do you feel yourself? I don't, I'm not on anything. Not I feel on, like I'm just standing. Just standing, okay. Just so, standing and looking. Okay, so let's find out what it is that you're doing here today. Trust your first impression. I think I'm scouting. Mm-hmm. Or I have been scouting. And it, it's... So connect now with your feelings, your emotions. Let's find out what you're scouting about. There are, there are, there may be an other people mm -hmm. that I'm trying to determine what's happening or mm -hmm. Tell me more. The more you talk, the more you'll know. Well, I feel like I'm I'm about to set up camp for the night. Mm -hmm. I don't see anyone else there. I'm alone. I mm -hmm. I believe. Mm -hmm. Do you work alone? I may be alone at this time. I don't. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Let's find out more. I'd like for you to accelerate that scene and let's find out what happens next. I'm on, I'm on a horse. Mm -hmm. It's daylight now. Mm -hmm. I, I, the scene is turned to daylight. Mm -hmm. And I see, I see the I've got a shirt on. I've got a, a a headband, long hair, and I am just riding along. Mm -hmm. What do you see around you? I'm like in a canyon. There's a lot of rocks this mm -hmm. time. Mm-hmm. And. I think I'm looking, I think I see a, like a wagon train in mm -hmm. the distance. Mm -hmm. And when you see this wagon train, how does it make you feel? It makes me feel like I want to avoid the mm -hmm. white people mm -hmm. uh, that are coming through my land. Mm -hmm. And um, I just want to avoid them. I, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not happy that they're there. Tell me more. What happens next? I feel like a little anxiety. Mm hmm. Uh, because I'm, I'm by myself, mm -hmm. but I think I was supposed to, I want to say, I think it was, I was supposed to find them mm -hmm. and then go back to where I came from to mm -hmm. report, mm -hmm. uh, where, you know, where they are, where, 
Okay. I, we knew they were coming. All right. So I want you to go ahead even deeper to this, this scene. And I want you to stop thinking. I want you to just start knowing. You'll know what's happened. Let's see what happens next. Well, what I'm seeing now is that I am talking to an elder mm -hmm. of my tribe, and I see myself raising my arm, pointing to where I saw the uh, wagon train, mm -hmm. and I'm describing um, describing where they would be. Mm -hmm. And I see, I see other, uh, teepees or tents mm -hmm. of, of the village or the tribe. So let's see what happens after you tell your leader about these people. I'd like for you to close the scene and let's go now to the next important scene. Be there now? What happens? Well, now we're sitting around a fire in a tent. And I, I, we may, we may be making plans. Mm -hmm. uh, Look around, see how many are with you. Who is there? Well, there's a, a there's a very elderly man there mm -hmm. who has a headdress that has horns on it, mm -hmm. and it looks almost like from Aztec. Mm -hmm. It's conical. It has turquoise and other um, decorations on it, mm -hmm. and he's speaking. And there's like half a dozen other men there. And I'm sitting there too. And we're listening to him. Mm -hmm. So I'd like for you to connect mind to mind with this elder. And let's find out what words he is speaking. What is he talking about? Well, the first thing I feel is that he's sorrow, sorrowful mm -hmm. about um, what I guess they consider an invasion mm -hmm. of uh, of people that don't belong here, and we know we know what they've done elsewhere. This is why mm -hmm. we know what they've done to other tribes and other peoples. And so we know that it's not good that they are coming, coming through our land. Mm -hmm. I feel great sadness and he's, he's sad as well. And I don't know that we will I don't know that this is a war party. It's more of like this is the our reality now that we 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 are trying to figure out how we survive, how we protect our women and children, our people, mm -hmm. and our life. Let's find out what happens next. Let's close that scene and let's now go to the next significant scene. My mind immediately went to the Calvary are here and they're shooting at us. <laughs> they're killing the people. They're killing our people. And I try to fight it. I see, I see a white man 
in a blue uniform and he's raised his shotgun. He has a brown mustache and I am running to him to try to stop him. And all I can see is smoke, smoke from the guns. The many guns are going off. What happens next? I think that I'm shot. I think he, as I go, I don't, I don't believe that I kill him. I think I raise my arm with the, the tomahawk or my weapon. So I'd like for you to step away from your body. See the scene from a different view now. And tell me what happens as your spirit leaves that body. You see me, I see me lying on the ground. Mm -hmm. I am wearing a long pants and by my shirt is pinkish red, mm -hmm. and I have a red bandana on, and I'm lying splayed out with a wound in my chest. Mm -hmm. I'm looking down at my body, and I'm just looking down, and I'm looking around, and there are many bodies on the ground. And I see the, the white men walking around and they're shooting anyone they think may still be alive. Mm -hmm. And as you're looking at this scene, what are the thoughts going through your mind? Have you made any vows? No, I'm just very sad. I'm sad for my people. Mm -hmm. What do you imagine is the purpose for have living living this life to love every day that you are alive to be thankful because that time may be short mm -hmm. and while the people were the only people on the, this earth we had a, we had a successful life. We had, our way was the way, mm -hmm. but something new now has come to the land. And even though we don't want, want our our way of life to stop. We understand that there are cycles. There's a cycle to everything on the earth. There is a time for us to have our way. And then there's a time when our way has passed. And that's what it is. Even though I don't want to see it pass, I know that it is what the Creator wanted. What advice would you like to give those ancestors of yours? Those that come to live your life, that may find struggle with the white man. flow with flow with the energy the our way or our power our power may have passed mm -hmm. but our way can be something carried inside. It doesn't 
necessarily die. Our love of Mother Earth and Father Sky and all the rituals that we do, those are still needed. And how is it that you affect the life of Joan? She seeks as well. I was a scout and I, it was my job to seek out. She seeks as well. Mm -hmm. And she's on a quest. Are you helping her? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. What advice would you like to give Joan? To continue to uh, to continue the journey. Don't give up. Mm -hmm. well, what happens when she sees all of her ancestors that are suffering now? What would you like to tell her about that? You told me that there were cycles. That's it. That that there is there is a cycle, mm -hmm. and our our time is not now. Mm -hmm. Our time passed, but at this time in our in the world in our world, there is a passing. This is what is happening now is definitely a transition mm -hmm. and it is also passing and and right now everyone fights against it. We were sorrowful. We fought against it and because we did, we pay with our lives. Our, our women and children were shot. We were shot. We don't need to do that anymore. You have to accept and flow. Flow with what is happening and accept. And adjust. Mm -hmm. It is possible to adjust. Well, she worries about truth justice and the American way. She gets concerned and frustrated about all the slow speed of karma. Why does it have to be so slow? Where is the justice for the dreamers? She is bought into the propaganda. <laughs> <laughs> she grew up believing in America and democracy and those are not going to go away, but people need to find a new way of expressing ourselves. Mm -hmm. Like our rituals, my people's rituals have not gone away. Mm -hmm. They are still there. They're in the hearts. They're in the hearts of many. They're in the hearts of many. And they can find those the rituals. They can find them within them. And they can express them in their own way. It's not, it, nothing ever has to be as some tell you it needs to be. Mm -hmm. So if someone tells you you have to do a certain ritual a certain way or it won't work? Right. Mm -hmm. That is not, that is not true. You must follow the instincts within you. If your intention is good, the Creator knows your intention. And it is that intention that guide, needs to guide you. And the knowledge will flow from the Creator into you. This is why I say you must flow. You must flow with the energy. The answers are there. They're there within you and they're, 
and some are outside of you and they would come into you if you let it flow, if you let the energy flow into you. So for someone who is not allowing the energy to flow, what is the best technique to allow that energy to flow? Well, <laughs> I am not a med. I don't meditate well. Mm -hmm. I I am I am not good at that. Uh, in sitting down, you have you have to do it the way you can. For those who can sit quietly and focus, that is good. Joan does can't do that. She does it while she's walking her dog. Mm -hmm. She daydreams. She gets into a zone. She imagines things. And then the ideas flow to her. The thoughts flow to her. It is, it, like with the rituals, like everything is individualistic. Everything depends on you. How it is that you will allow it in mm -hmm. whether it is doing yoga or tai chi or running or praying or you know you can try all of those things and what speaks to you or what works for you is what you should do mm -hmm. how do you know when the energy is flowing what does it feel like for me right now, it feels like emotions mm -hmm. going through me, mm -hmm. pictures going through me, the words flowing through me. Mm -hmm. um, if I focus on it, I can see a flow. Mm -hmm. I can see a flow behind my eyes. Mm -hmm. Now talking about flow, She's been doing this research, going from one place to another, flowing. Yes. Why is she going to so many places? Who's guiding her and why? Her ancestors are guiding her. Mm. Her ancestors are guiding her. She is, they're very excited for her to do what she's doing next. Mm-hmm. They, they have, she is very tuned in to synchronicity. Mm -hmm. She sees the signs and she feels, she feels, she feels when it is meant as a message for her. Mm -hmm. So these ancestors that are guiding her, who are they? Do they have names? Because she has quite a few names. They are they are many. <laughs> <laughs> they are many, and she is she is finding them. Mm -hmm. uh, they continue to guide her, and uh, a name that's coming forward is Chief Bone Necklace mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. She. And this is an idea that she actually has already. Mm -hmm. She has the idea of finding more information about him because he was related to her great, great, great grandmother. And so she, there is no, there are no biographies about him. No, nobody, no, not many people know about him. Mm -hmm. And so she wants to find information about him to write about him so people know him. She has had that idea. They are very excited about the project that she will begin uh, of writing about her Native American ancestry. Mm -hmm. Now today, today we saw a scene in which she as a scout was sitting with an elder. Who was that? Was that a chief? Yes, he would. Yes, he would have been a chief. Mm -hmm. But not her ancestor. No, mm -hmm. no. 
So these ancestors, when we are doing genealogy, like Joan is doing very much, how does that affect the ancestors? What do they feel when you start? They feel up? visible. Mm. Visible. That's the word that has come to my mind. Mm -hmm. They feel visible. They feel recognized. They have contributed. They have contributed. And she has thought this because she has, she has detected a pattern in her family tree mm -hmm. of men who abandon. Uh, they have a family and then they abandon them. This happened with her father. Mm -hmm. This has happened with his father. And they do not know, her father does not know this, but it happened, it skipped a generation, but it happened to her grandfather's mother. Abandonment. And she, from seeing this, she believes that we are handed DNA. DNA is a tool. DNA tests is a tool now used in genealogy. We are, we, we receive DNA, but we receive more than DNA from our ancestors. What do we receive? We receive memories. We see, receive, we receive, uh, patterns, sometimes patterns that are good and sometimes patterns that are not good. Like this, this abandonment theme that she sees in her family, uh, in one line of, of her family, but things can change. There is free will. You don't have to follow all patterns. You can learn and change. Mm -hmm. And if the DNA can be changed in one person, we know that we are really not bodies. We're spirits and bodies. Mm -hmm. If we can change the DNA of one person, as we do in our hypnosis sessions, can then that cause the hundred monkey effect and affect the others? Yes. So what can we do today to begin transforming the DNA of Joan to help her ancestors, to help right the wrongs, clear the karma? Everything with love. Very good. It's with love. Mm -hmm. You let love flow like energy flows. Love flows and, and it heals. Mm -hmm. And love flows in and it changes things. Mm -hmm. More love is needed. So I'd like for you to go ahead and let's put a flashlight on those things that we need to change and transform today. What is it that the ancestors would like to tell Joan today that sh should be corrected or transformed in her family's life? Don't stop worrying that everything will work out. Everything is, uh, everything will be all right. Every, every choice that she makes will be good and will be in her highest good. Mm -hmm. So let's flow some love into that and let's replace doubt with what? Confidence. Confidence. So let's begin now transforming every cell in her body, replacing all of that doubt with confidence. Feel it flow through your body. 
knowing that everything will work out exactly as it's meant to be. Using that love, that energy, to transform. And let's expand that out now into the universe as it goes into all of her family members. Allow this energy to reach all of those ancestors in the past, present, and future. Transforming doubt into confidence. Feel the energy flow. And let me know when it has reached the masses. It's done. Very good. Thank you. She has a question about the giving of her Dakota name. She had that dream that night in which she was visited by a spirit. Who was that? It was her grandmother. Mm -hmm. It was. It was. Yes. What was her grandmother there to say or do for her? It was to thank her, thank her for, uh, thank her for accepting her name. Mm -hmm. And I just, I think it was just to be, just to be there, to see, see her descendants. Mm -hmm. You know, what she, she struggled through her life. Uh, she did not have an easy life. And so she was looking upon what her seed, what her work, what her life contributed to. Mm -hmm. And that was the life of Joan. And how did she feel about the life of Joan? Proud. 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 Mm hmm does grandmother have anything to say to her today? I feel just a total well of emotion, mm -hmm. a well of emotion of love and gratitude. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, your journey, her journey will continue on and there is more mm -hmm. to come. Well, she has questions about this journey of genealogy. She wants to know if it's only for her pleasure or is there a purpose? She's to teach. To teach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's to, she's started, she has started where she is, mm -hmm. but it will continue. It will continue and it will grow. And uh, is she on the right track? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, we've put her on this track. You have. We've put her on this track. And while she has been slow on the track and sometimes she deviated, mm -hmm. she's come. she always comes back to it. Yes. And uh, she is correct in saying that this is a turning point. Yes. And that the fellowship that she will do will lead. I don't know exactly where it will lead, but it will lead to other things mm -hmm. for her. Uh, she knows this. She knows this because she has experienced stuff like this before, where she has made a choice to be on the right track and gifts are given and they come. Opportun and gifts in terms of opportunity the next exciting opportunity, the next exciting opportunity. And so that is what she will experience again. Mm -hmm. Is this part of being on the 5D world in the new earth? I want to say yes and no, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, there are many people 
that want to find their ancestors, mm -hmm. but they are not necessarily, isn't they're not doing it for a spiritual, ah. um, uh, purpose. Mm -hmm. So for many in the 3d world to, uh, to find their ancestors, one thing that Joan laughs about is, and she has, she has met someone, she met someone a year ago who said, oh, I, I have Mayflower ancestors mm -hmm. and Joan does not. And she doesn't, she does not care. Mm -hmm. It's no, it's no, it doesn't matter. It's, it's not about what status the ancestors had. But what was so funny, and this was a lesson for, for Joan to understand, is when the person that said she had Mayflower ancestors, when they found out Joan had an, the type of ancestors in Quebec that were women who were came to the New World as part of a program uh, to uh, marry the white men that were already in the new world. When that woman found out Joan had many of those as her grandmothers, they were envious. <laughs> she was envious mm -hmm. of Joan. And so Joan doesn't, she doesn't care about that status. Mm -hmm. It's not important to her to be related to a chief. She just wants to find people and find out how they lived. She loves the history of it. Mm -hmm. Her passion, her passion about the history and about the lives reaches people. Mm -hmm. So for some, it will be a help on their spiritual journey to connect with their ancestors. But for others, it will be status. Mm -hmm. She just needs to understand that. Yes. Mm -hmm. And will she be writing about this? Yes. Mm -hmm. She needs to write. She That's the track that she's on to write, mm -hmm. uh, which will open up opportunities to teach. People will seek her out to learn from her. Mm -hmm. And she, but she has more to write and she knows this. She knows she has ideas. Those ideas are flowing into her. Mm -hmm. And, uh, because it is not just, it's not just academic writing mm -hmm. that she will do. She can also write stories mm -hmm. because stories will sit with people and they will remember them better. Mm -hmm. Now she says she was starting to write a fictional story already about a fallen angel, but something happened. Her phone rang. She had a evil type of message on the other side. She felt it was some sort of a warning and she stopped. What happened there? It was a warning. Mm -hmm. Who was warning her? Demonic mm. warning. It was a demonic warning. So what does she need to do? Does she need to protect herself? Yes. Okay. What is the best way for her to protect herself? Well, we... Recently, she went to a spiritual fair where she lives mm -hmm. in, uh, and she was fascinated by the crystals mm -hmm. and, uh, she, we have given her this thought in her head that she needs crystal crystals around her house that protect her. Mm -hmm. And so she has the idea. She even bought a, 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 a Metatron grid mm -hmm. or, and she has not put any crystals on it yet, but she needs to do that. Okay. 
we drew, we drew her to the crystals. Is there any particular crystal that is more connected to her? Well, she was told by another person to wear Lapita light, mm -hmm. and that is what she's wearing today. Okay. And uh, she is drawn to the color purple mm -hmm. and lavender. And so those are strong crystals for her. Okay. So is there a way that she could connect with the crystals to know which one is the best for her? Does she just need to hold them? She needs to hold them. Okay. Yes. Good. Mm -hmm. Now, getting back to the story, should she continue that story about the fallen angel? Not at this time. Not at this time. Not at this time. Her The stories that she should go towards should be connected to her ancestors at this time. Okay. So the Native American yes. stories? Okay. Yes. Now, she says she also daydreams a lot, and she gets a lot of images, a lot of scenarios in her mind. Yes. What's going on there? She is. She has a good imagination. Mm -hmm. Her mother read books to her when, and her siblings, her and her brother, they would read at the table. I have a flash of them at the table, sitting on each side of her mother, and she's reading a book. And reading was very important so she had her imagination it made her imagination strong mm -hmm. she can write these things down as stories and you know they will be someday she will have the opportunity to write okay. those stories good good where are these stories coming from who's giving her these ideas they are flowing into her from the universe. Okay, so she just has to grab it as it goes by? Yes. Okay. Is that how stories are? Is that why people get ideas? They just flow? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. You, ha you have to be attuned to them. You have to... She is. She's more attuned than she thinks she is. Mm -hmm. She looks to her brothers and sees that they know things and they are attuned and they are spiritual mm -hmm. and she wishes that she had some of their gifts but she has her own mm -hmm. well she tells me that she worries about being woefully behind when she sees my videos and other people are doing these wonderful things yes in fact, in the story that in the what she wrote to you mm -hmm. today, she ends by saying she is just an ordinary person, but she's not. <laughs> she's not. No one is. Everyone, everyone has something in them mm -hmm. that makes them extraordinary. And I wish, I wish they all believed this. Mm -hmm. So what are her gifts? Her intuition is strong, mm -hmm. as she knows, and she told you. Mm -hmm. Now, she says she's drawn to the working with oracles and tarot cards. Yes. She needs to trust more in, in doing that. Mm -hmm. She thinks she has to go through a, a major meditation before using them on, and she has to have the right tablecloth and the and the right candles burning mm -hmm. and stuff like that mm -hmm. she does not need that so she doesn't have to run out and buy a crystal ball no okay no she is drawn by the artwork mm -hmm. and the oracle cards that that she is uh She's drawn to the artwork. Those are the ones that she should use. If she holds one and she looks through them and they and they don't speak to her, she should put those aside. Okay. She has some cards that she should not use because they, they will not speak to her. And there are some that she has that she should concentrate on because mm -hmm. 
they will have uh, more connection. Mm -hmm. Just like the crystals. Right. Okay, good. Now, she says that her home is in Lincoln, Nebraska, but each year she longs to return to Maine. What's going on in Maine? What is the connection? Her heart is there. Mm -hmm. Her heart is there because her family is there, mm -hmm. and the ocean is there. What is she, connection does she have with the ocean? What does she need from the ocean? She needs the peace of the ocean. Mm. She misses water. This is the underlying thing. She misses water. And where she is, of course, in Nebraska, there there is a sea of grass, but no sea of water. Mm -hmm. uh, she lives in the city, but there are lakes and there are ponds and she should go more often to sit by one. She should, she, that will help her. Okay. So any body of water? Yes. She a natural, a natural body of Not water. Not a pool. Not a pool. No, uh, a lake, a pond. Something that has a connection to mother earth. Yeah. Not cemented. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes. Even, uh, even a flowing river like the, the Mississippi River. Mm -hmm. she, yesterday she was at the Arch Park and she regretted not walking down by the river. Mm -hmm. So what do you recommend? That, uh, that she go and, and more often to a body of water okay. that is natural. And then she needs to listen. She can, um, she has a CD of ocean sounds. Mm -hmm. She can play, play those more often and that will visually bring the ocean to her mind okay. and give her peace. Now she also tells me that she has this obsession about RVing selling the house, roaming. What's her body telling her? Does she need a vacation? Or is it the draw to the ocean? It's both, but she works a very stressful job. Mm -hmm. And she, she needs to recuperate more. Mm -hmm. And so she needs to that's an indication that she needs, she does need to rest mm -hmm. and need to stop. And, uh, so should she be, t should she sell her house and leave or are we just talking about her taking more vacation? Taking more, more vacation. Okay. She should wait because this, this, uh, fellowship time, she will be off her usual schedule. She should see how this works and then, then decide after. Okay, good. Now she tells me that she would like to have a teacher or someone who she could ask questions or engages in intellectual or spiritual conversations. Yes. Now we talked about that before we, were, we went into hypnosis. What is the best way for Joan to connect with like-minded people where she is in Nebraska, the Bible area? Well, she has an idea mm -hmm. of, she discovered there is a meditation center mm -hmm. and she discovered a, uh, there will be more discoveries. Mm -hmm. the, as she gets into what she's doing, she will discover more things and connect with more people. Mm -hmm. And, uh, the other thing is she can, she needs to not be afraid to tell people that she does tarot readings mm -hmm. and that she has strong intuition. And then, th then people will come to her mm -hmm. and she will discover that they will come to her and, dis and discover her and she will discover them. Mm. And then they will have the conversations that she needs to have. 
the conversation you you had with her today was very helpful. Mm -hmm. She learned a lot. And that's exactly the kind of thing that she is looking for. Mm -hmm. Other people to connect with. Yes, mm -hmm. because that will grow her knowledge. Mm -hmm. She loves to learn. This is why she loves the genealogy, because when she learns that she has a fur trader uh, grandfather in her family tree, she learns everything about fur trading. <laughs> she, you know, she, she dives in because of her passion and mm -hmm. her love mm -hmm. and her interest, and she wants to learn. Mm -hmm. And she, and things that she's interested in, she will want to learn more. But she needs a teacher an advanced more advanced person who knows more than she does to help answer her questions okay and that will come good now what is the reason why joan chose this incarnation what was she supposed to be doing now helping people mm -hmm. she helps people she helps people as a librarian she helps people as a friend she helps her family. Now I'd like to ask a little bit about the way she sees things. And we first started off our conversation about just the truth, justice in the American way. And I know that she focuses a lot on the concerns, frustrations about how they, how people are treated. Not only the Native Americans, but the African Americans, the Muslims, the immigrants, the women. How can she flow with more love? How can she see the situation from God's eyes? This is why she needs to visit the water. Mm -hmm. Because it will remind her of the flow of life. Mm -hmm. It will remind her of the cycles. And she, she has to uh, she has to stop as much social media. Mm -hmm. uh, not good. Not good for you. Mm -hmm. What is it that she's focusing on? in social media that is upsetting her? Well, she sees a lot of the the negative things that are happening that people post. Mm -hmm. And while it is uh, positive for her to connect with her friends and family, that's happening less and less, and she's seeing more of the animosity. Mm -hmm. And... Um, she's taking that she feels that mm -hmm. she feels emotions deeper than she knows she feels the uh emotions of the of the world deeper than she knows she's very sensitive and so um that is coming through, and so she needs to restrict that more. Okay. Will that allow her to go into this uh, 5D that she's wanting to go into? Yes, eventually, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As she grows spiritually, as uh, she's a very positive person, and, and uh, she just needs to uh, focus on that and focus on the optimism that she usually has she has a way of seeing a situation and looking for the lesson in it mm -hmm. and the uh and turning it on its head in terms of seeing the positive and she has that gift uh so she just needs to work with that more okay good do you think that that is a good answer for her? She'll understand that? I think she will. Okay, good. 
And if she visits water and it soothes her, and she lets that peace roll over her, mm -hmm. that will be good too. Wonderful. Thank you. Now she says that she needs to be, um, needs to find out why she cannot lose weight. Is this something from this lifetime or from a different lifetime that is keeping all of that weight? Holding in emotions is She's, what I'm getting. Mm -hmm. She's holding in her emotions and she needs to let them out. Okay, so let's find out what caused that. I'd like for you to take her back in time and let's find out what was the event, the moment that locked up all those emotions. I'm just seeing embarrassment. Mm -hmm. It's not just one event, it's a series of events. It's different times when, when I'm seeing a, well, one particular scene I'm seeing but I know that this is a, just a series. Every time she felt humiliated mm -hmm. or embarrassed. Mm -hmm. But I'm seeing a scene in church where she went up to, they were calling for the children to come up to the front and see a, a hear a story or something. And they were, it, it was a collection drive for Thanksgiving or something, they all had a uh, a can in their hand. And though she was a teenager, she wasn't a child. She, her mother made her go up and bring the can. And then, but she didn't want to stay with the little children up there because she was not a child. And so she walked back to her mother and the pastor followed her and said, where are you going in front of the whole church? And she felt very embarrassed mm -hmm. and she tried to get a hug from her mother and her mother pushed her away. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm seeing. So let's find out which is the part that, that was the worst. Was it the pastor or the mom? Both. 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 Can we get some, some uh, chiming in here from her mom? And uh, let's find out. If her mom has anything to say about this situation? She was embarrassed too. Mm-hmm. She was embarrassed too. So this is the way her mom reacted yes. to this embarrassment? Yes. All right. So can we forgive ourselves for holding on to something? Yes. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and put my hand on top of your chest, and I want you to pull out all of that embarrassment now understanding that people sometimes react in strange ways that we don't expect. And not only did the pastor react in a strange way in following you, but your mom also pushed you away in embarrassment. And that it was the expectation that really was the thing that was really strange in this, wasn't it? pastor wasn't acting the way you thought he would mm -hmm. and your mom didn't either so let's pull all this out now knowing that sometimes people don't act the way we think we don't have to hold that any longer pull it all out so. very good let's take that scent to the universe what would we like to put in that space instead Forgiveness and care. All right, so let's put that in. Let's put a lot of forgiveness in there because the forgiveness is about you, about holding all of this pain in for no reason. Now knowing that sometimes people just act a little strange, don't they? And let's put some care in there for you to care for who you are. And let's seal that in. And sometimes we understand that we don't always get the reaction that we want. And I know that Joan has had a cat before. And sometimes cats and dogs are a little bit different. When mm -hmm. a dog greets you at the door, it seems like you're a rock star. Dog wa wags his tail and embraces you. And no matter how long you've been gone, that dog just loves you the way it is. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you get home to a cat 
and you expect the cat to be doing the same thing. And the cat may just walk away and look at you like, so what What are you home doing here? Mm-hmm. All right. Feed me. <laughs> Feed me, that's right. No appreciation. Mm-hmm. So we can now understand that seeing things as a teenager or, or child, we expect everyone to be like a dog, expect everyone to greet us with open arms and understand us and love us no matter what. But sometimes we find that people are like cats, unexpected, right? and we don't quite understand what happens. So we, instead of understanding that they're just cats, we hold those emotions in, not wanting it to happen again. But I know Joan that had a cat for a very long time, and she loved her cat anyway, and still gave her cat love. Uh So can we now go through her life and see if there's any other cat situations that ever kept her emotions locked in? I'm not getting anything else. Very good. So let's find out what the reason is she's holding in that weight now. Do we see any reason to keep that weight padded on her? No. All right. She's no. She no longer needs to walk around like those commercials, holding on to all those uh, those uh, bounty or or toilet uh, tissues around her body to keep her from being injured. Can we go ahead and begin unraveling? All of that padding that she's been holding all those emotions in? I'm doing it right now in my head, yes. Very good. Let's just unwrap it. Get all of this cushion off of her. She doesn't need to be, and she's not even a hockey player. She's not going to get checked into the wall. Nobody's going to push her around any longer. She's full of confidence. Yep. Mm-hmm. Very good. Mm-hmm. And let's also work on her metabolism. And let's get that metabolism revved up a little bit so that when she eats something, it'll go into energy, it'll go into excitement. Yep. It'll go into going out there and walking more, finding places to discover. I'm doing it right now. Bodies of water. Very good. Making that metabolism rush like a river. Very good. And let's find out what's going on as you're doing that. What's happening with the sugar? What is the trigger of the sugar? It's connected with emotions again. Emotions. And are. so that should be that should be okay. She she's done this before where she lost a lot of weight mm-hmm. and she gave up sugar. She would only eat berries. Mm-hmm. She should go back to eating the berries. All right. So can we go ahead and start changing those taste buds to where she craves the berries, craves things yes. that are good for her, that are nutritious, yes. energetic, full of lots of vitamins. And when she sees something with sugar, she sees it as something pretty much like cardboard, not much to it. Right. Good. And I'd like to ask what's causing the arthritis. I'm getting a picture of an elderly person. Mm-hmm. Let's find out what that is. Is that an energy that is an energetic entity that's elderly? Let's take a look I'm, at her body. I'm getting I'm, my knees. Mm-hmm. Let's find out what's in their knees. Would you allow me to bring up that energy, please? Yes. I'm going to take my hand and put it over her knees, and let's bring that energy up, 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 up. Good morning. Are you male or female? I'm female, and my name is Hortense. Hortense, how old are you? I'm very old. I'm 99. Hortense, what are you doing there on her knees? Oh, I'm I'm making them ache. Make for what reason? So then she walks less. Mm -hmm. And why do you not want her to walk? Because I don't like walking. Hortense, what happened to your body, your own body? How did you die? I got very old and frail. Uh huh. And when you left that body, Hortense, where did you go? I don't remember, but I didn't go anywhere. Mm-hmm. And how did you find Joan? How old was she? 
she was in the fourth grade. She had chicken pox. Mm-hmm. And and I just went into her body. You did. Mm-hmm. So her immune system was down. Yes. And what have you been doing to her all this time? Have you telling her things? Not to exercise as much, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, I would make her do things that would hurt her knee. Hmm. For what reason? So that that then she would stop walking. Mm-hmm. So she would she would fall on her knees. She would uh, trip, and then she wouldn't walk so much because she would hurt. Mm-hmm. Hortense. Yes. Wouldn't you like to finally feel better? You've been feeling so old and frail for so long. Wouldn't it be nice to feel good again? Yes. All right. We have a solution for that. Hortense, in the area of your heart, there is a little light. It's the God spark. This is the spark that created you. This is your connection to home. Find that spark, Hortense. And tell me when you find it. I found it. All right. Now, Hortense, make it bigger. Make it really big. And tell me how it feels. Warm. All right. So make it even bigger. Make yourself as big as a star. Expand it out. All right. I'm as big as the sun. How does that feel? It feels great. No pains, are there? No, I feel, I feel energy. Mm-hmm. So now, Hortense, do you realize this is where you should have gone after you left your body? This is what it's like to be in the love of God again. It feels wonderful. What do you have to say to Joan after causing her so much pain all this time? I'm sorry, we should have done this sooner. Mm-hmm. So would you like her to forgive you for that? Yes, please. All right. So let's take a deep breath in. Joan, can you forgive Hortense for not knowing any better? Yes. All right. So we're going to send Hortense back home with love and light. And Hortense, I'd like for you to go ahead and begin pulling out all of your energy from your her body. Yep, I'm pulling it out of the knees and, and the feet. Very good. And when you pull it all out, I'd like for you to go ahead and send some of that beautiful light into her body. It's a yellow light, the yellow light to the knees and the feet. Wonderful. And tell me when you're done, Hortense. I'm done. Very good. So I'd like for you to go ahead, go out through the top of her head right here. And Archangel Michael is there to greet you. Tell me when you see him. I see him. I see him. What does he look like? He's beautiful. Mm. He's a he's a white light, and his wings are huge, long, long hair. What does he tell you? Welcome. Come with me. Wonderful. He's going to take you home, Hortense. Tell me when you both get there. Yeah, I'm in the clouds. Mm-hmm. I'm in the clouds. Tell me when you, if anybody's there to greet you. I see my husband. Mm-hmm. He's there. What does he say to you? <laughs> He's just happy to see me. Wonderful. Give him a big hug. And may the light of the universe always accompany Hortense. Thank you so much. Very, Thank you. Very good. So now I'd like for you to scan her body and see what is causing the issue with her neck. I'm not finding anything. Mm-hmm. So why is it a herniated disc? Why did that happen? <laughs> her reading. Her reading. <laughs> her reading. Always have a book on her lap. Uh huh. When she was young, always looking down at the book in her lap. So is that neck herniated or not? It's not bothering her now. Okay. Uh, I mean it. I think it will always, there will always be an issue there, Mm -hmm. but she knows what to do to uh, keep it better. All right. Can we begin putting some of that energy in there and begin transforming that area into a nice, healthy neck? Nice and strong? I'm doing it now. Very good. Thank you.
I'm getting something in her feet. All right, let's find out what's in her feet, please. I'm going to take my hands and I'm going to move that energy up. All the way up, 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 up. You can express yourself now. Are you male or female? I don't know. Are you some an energy that she created or are you attached to her? I'm getting that I'm an energy she created. All right, so let's find out what it is that created you. What is the emotion or the word? Tired. 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 All right. So let's find out why she created you. I think when she was, when she was overworked or stressed, she made the excuse that she was too tired mm -hmm. to do anything, to exercise or to walk or whatever. And so, uh, I have been also uh, giving her pain and she just says she's tired. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's take a deep breath in. Joan, do we need to have that tired feeling in your feet anymore? Does it serve you? No, I don't want it anymore. Okay. So we cannot eliminate what you created because you are God. You created this. But uh, just like you created it, you can transform it. What okay. Would, what would we like to transform all of that tired feeling into? Awake. All right. Awake. Now, what is, what is the color of tired? What do those feet look like? If we're Gray. Getting, and what does awake look like? Yellow. Very good. So let's begin the transformation now. Begin putting yellow into your feet. Let's begin transforming it completely from tired to awake. Mm -hmm. And tell me when it's done. Yes, they're a wash in yellow. Very good. Very good. So now I'd like for the higher self to go ahead and scan her body and see if there's anything else that we need to take care of today in her body. No, that's it. Very good. So I have a question for you. Joan came all the way from Nebraska to St. Louis to see me. What was the reason you brought her here today? So that she could get answers to her questions. Mm -hmm. And do you feel that you have answered her questions today? Yes. Mm -hmm. And she, she knew the answers, mm -hmm. but she wasn't confident enough in herself. And she saw you as the teacher to learn from mm -hmm. those answers and you are the bridge. So what would you like to tell her now, now that she understands that all of the answers are within, how can she connect? With she you? just needs to look within, mm -hmm. look within, ask the question. And if she writes it down, she will get the answer. Mm -hmm. She will get the answer. Good. So what's the best way for her to connect with you? She just has to speak to quiet her. Uh, she just has to speak. Very good. Anything else that you would like to tell Joan today? Love you very much. Proud of you. Um, you are on the right track. Very good. Is there anything else or are we complete today? We are complete. Very good. Thank you so much for the higher self and all of the ancestors who are here, who guide her and continue to guide her. And wonderful. Oh my gosh. Welcome back. <laughs> that was incredible. You like it? Amazing. Oh my gosh. You did great. I've got chills all over my body right now. It's like, wow. Well, let's switch that cell and I with some shungite so we can ground you. Let's get you oh, grounded wow. now, back to Mother Earth. So, that was amazing. Huh? How long do you think this journey was? A half an hour? 
We're about an hour and 20 minutes. No way. Yeah. No way. That, that, I can't believe that. Wow. <laughs> now you, now you I know thought why, it was like a half an hour. Now you know why people say that, huh? Time just uh, wow. goes quickly. Wow. Did you see things clearly? Yes. And I could not believe how the wound that I carried was still there mm -hmm. and what that was. And I understand it even better now. Yeah. Interesting, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Because my mother was central. Yeah. She was central. And when she pushed you away. Yeah. Yes, that was... So she was embarrassed, too. Yeah. She didn't know how yeah. to react. No. No. Wow. You're great. I'm so happy to have discovered that. I am. I'm so happy because I can let that go. Yeah. That's what it was all about, huh? Yeah. I wondered. I knew there was something that I had to let go, but I didn't know what it was. That's what it was. Uh, just that <laughs> means everything. It does. It is, I, fell, I feel lighter already. It's amazing. I feel free already. It's amazing. I really do, honestly. That's how I feel. I mean... Yeah, I wanted to see a past life. Yeah, I wanted to know what I instinctively knew already. Mm -hmm. I wanted it affirmed. Mm -hmm. But... And you also had an attachment. Yeah. An old lady. Hortense. <laughs> uh, Hortense. <laughs> and that name came through so fast you wouldn't believe it. Hortense. It's like... I've heard that name before. I know relatives that I know have that name, but yeah. uh, it's like... That's a very old-fashioned name. That is. That is. Yeah. yeah. And I saw her as a very old lady mm -hmm. over a walker, you know, not being able to walk. Yeah. So... So is this something you want to keep personal? You want to share this? Oh, no. I want to share it because I feel like... Um, if it can heal someone, yeah. it it's it needs to do that. You know, I feel like I watch your videos and I feel healed or I feel more knowledgeable. I feel mm -hmm. excited about and optimistic. It's it's you know the optimism. Yeah, and so I I'm happy to share that. Wonderful. Go. Good, 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 good. So I feel like a balloon floating around. That's how lightheaded I am. So, you did great. Oh, I thank you. I'm so, I'm it's so happy. Time. I'm so happy with the hurt that was yeah. lifted. Yeah, that and was amazing. It that just it's made such a difference already. So, tell everybody why you came. What was the main reason that, that you came and what you got out of it? Well, inside I knew that something needed to be healed, mm -hmm. but I didn't know what it was. And my own existential searching wasn't <laughs> finding it. And so I knew I needed help. And um, I was curious about my path yeah. and understanding because I, I know I'm being, I, I'm being led somewhere. Yeah. And I always want to know the end game, but I have to be, I have to be, you know, okay with not knowing the yeah. unknown, the excitement yeah. of the unknown. That's what it is. I mean, yeah. that's what we come here for is really to, to grow and to see what's next and what's next and what's next. Yes. You know? So, I mean, uh, and I, and I'm an altruistic person in the sense that I want to help people. I yeah. became a librarian because I believe in helping people. And, um, you know, I, so I wanted all of those things and I, and I think I got that and much more. Wow. And you actually visited this life of this native American in the yes. moment where things were happening. How did yes. that feel to be on the other side? Because you researched this stuff and now you're on, well, the, on the emotional part of it. Right. Well, I was overwhelmed with the emotion, but I also, I also understood a little bit of the 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 finality of it like mm -hmm. this 
we have to surrender and accept mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that this is this is and that's I think that's part of the lesson of what we were talking yeah. about before we began yeah. and what I didn't understand well tell everybody what, what it was that we're talking about because we we were talking about um, the truth the and, truth, ju- the, and justice in the American way <laughs> yeah Truth and justice and the American way. I'm, I'm just I'm just very frustrated with, or I was frustrated with, the, all the injustice and the way things are going now because I grew up and went mm-hmm. through public schools, you know, believing that uh, in democracy, in the tenets of the Constitution, mm-hmm. and I'm and I'm just so sad with uh, what thing, how things are going on, how you know, how much injustice there is Mm -hmm. to minorities and Muslims Mm -hmm. and women and Mm -hmm. Native Americans. And I was so happy, you know, when the the Dakota pipeline was stopped Mm -hmm. or we thought it was stopped. Mm -hmm. It's not truly stopped. Mm -hmm. Uh, But so how do you feel now after you've experienced this? Well, it's that cycle is and it's trying to t- internalize it mm-hmm. there's there's a for me there's always been a conflict between the head and the heart yeah and i am an emotional person i i definitely felt a lot of emotions mm-hmm. so it's this it's this balance yeah now i understand why i've had uh had readings and people say you need to be more balanced it's this balance yeah 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 so, what's, well, how would you suggest people handle this injustice? <laughs> well, it, you know, learning learning about the cycles yeah. and 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 the conversation that we had that mm-hmm. helped me in mm-hmm. in saying the karma is through, you know, that that soul was here in a different way mm-hmm. and is now playing a different role right. that shows them the other side of what they did or That's didn't right. do. That's right. And uh, so sometimes the victim becomes the victor. Yeah. And and the victim was the actual the bad guy before, you know, right. and it turns right. around. Right. So is this something that you would recommend to other people? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, because even even that small answer yeah. about what hurt I was carrying yeah. is will change my life, and I and I knew I knew this visit had potential to do that. That's great, and that's great. I think it, 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 it. I feel lighter already. That's wonderful. And you came from where? Lincoln, Nebraska. And right now we're in St. Louis, Missouri. This is where I am right now. My first my first day here, and. Uh, it's great. If you want a session with me, just go to my website, albawineman.com. Sign up for the newsletter. It comes out about once a month. tells you where I'm going to be traveling to next. And that's the only way to get a session, whether you're in Miami or anywhere. Just sign up for that. And um, when my sessions open up, you'll get the link. Click on it. And that's how you got here, correct? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And uh, if it's meant to be, you'll be here. All right, I hope you enjoyed this session. I sure did. And I hope I get to meet you sometime soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Give me that hug. Give me that hug. <laughs> Thank you, Elba.